Brothers and sisters in the Lord, one key thing in our Christian journey is the Word of God. If you have not studied in schools, you can be a doctor, you can be a nurse, pilot, engineer, lawyer, accountant, architect, etc. Skills and productivity come from heavy knowledge. It's the same with our Christian journey. We can't be effective and fruitful if we don't know and read the Word of God. We will forever remain spiritual babies with weak faith and easily discouraged by life's problems. Read the Word of God. The Bible has several phrases like be rooted in Christ, have strong foundation, be mature, let Christ be formed in you, be built up in your holy faith, and take up the sword of the Holy Spirit. You can't do all these things without reading the Bible. Don't ever reach heaven without even reading the Bible once. We will now have an opening prayer. Let's pray. Lord Almighty, all your words are true and trustworthy. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Your word brings us joy strength and comfort when we are in distress. It's a word that purifies our soul and enables us to bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Please reveal your will and purpose to us as we read your word. Help us to have a humble and teachable heart. Help us to rejoice in your word and be quick to obey for your promised blessings and life to those who keep them. We praise your name, O Father. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen.
For this we end, we have Dawson Lee to share with us the Word of God. He's our member and our leader and now mentoring him. He's a secondary school teacher and also uh, leads a Bible study group uh, with some of his students. My message today is titled, Choose Life. Um, we start from the beginning, what it means by choose life. Yeah. So in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We all know the story of Genesis. Everything He created, and He also created man and woman. And He gave a warning to them and said that you can eat of every fruit in the garden. Okay, I'll show you, I read Genesis. The command was you can eat everything, enjoy everything in the garden, except for that one tree, which is the tree of knowledge. Yeah? Okay. And we will see that eventually God gave them this warning and He also told them that because if you eat from this fruit, you will, you will die. Okay. Now, the serpent was uh, very cunning. He deceived Adam and Eve and they both chose to eat from that tree, fully aware that it will lead to death. And sin entered the world as, uh, as a result condemning generations of people until, praise be to the Lord, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, So the Lord paid for our ransom on the cross. Now, Jesus paid for the penalty on the cross, but this doesn't mean that God has taken away our ability to sin. Right? Because God, even though He is omnipresent, omniscient, and omnipotent, He has chosen to limit His power and allow man a free will to choose. But God is faithful. He never withholds truth from man. Whatever decisions that he makes, he always tells the people, what happens if you choose this, or what happens if you choose that. From the Genesis story, we learn that in order to make a decision, we must be aware of all the options that are available and what would happen to each of these options. My sharing today will be based uh, primarily on one scripture, which is from uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19 to 20. Moses, here talking to the Israelites, before he eventually passed on, he said, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that both you and your descendants may live that you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey His voice, and you may cling to Him, for He is your life and the length of your days, and that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19 to 20. So we look at here, if you have your Bible with you, you look at here, what kind of decision is God through Moses is asking the Israelites to make, is to make a choice between blessings and cursings, life and death. So, one conscious decision can decide between life and death. Now, a bit of myself, you know, once upon a time when I was younger, I was very ignorant. I was careless with my life choices. I made poor decisions. Uh, for example, if I had studied harder, if I had studied harder for my Form 4, I wouldn't have got so bad grades for my Ed Maths. <laughs> okay, yeah, that was one of the regrets I had in my life academically. Also, other, other things like sin and also a life of, uh, you know, just pleasuring myself, yeah, no, no regards for others. Okay, so if I had known the implications of my decisions, and the power behind it, you know, I think I would have chosen differently. My first subtopic today, which is the power of decisions. I have uh, come up, um, after studying and also examining scripture and also listening to different messages, the decisions, I think for us, there are three. What are the power behind these decisions? Number one is decisions. Number one, decide where we end up in life. In short, decisions decide your destiny. It's not age. It's not gender. Whether you're a man or woman, doesn't matter. 
not even our conditions, circumstances. A lot of people blame that, oh, I was like this because you know, people do this to me. I was like this because things happened to you. Yeah, I'm like this because of, you know, things that happened before me. You know, but if you look very closely at the Bible in Luke chapter 15, there are people, there's a prodigal son, you remember prodigal son? Yeah, the prodigal son, eh? okay. So he had everything. Father was rich, you know, he, he, the father loved him. So he had everything, but what did he do? He chose to leave his father and waste all his money away. Okay, so you can have good conditions, but make bad decisions. Agree? Mm, good. So next, we look at the flip side. We have our uh, King David. Okay, David rose from a shepherd boy to become the king of Israel. Yeah? So a shepherd boy, humble beginnings, his father even said that the, his father even kind of like forgot about him when, he, when Samuel asked him to bring, the, bring his sons to be chosen, to be, one of them to be anointed as king. David was forgotten. Okay? But he rose and became king of Israel. So your condition can great. You can make foolish decision, decisions while others can make good out of bad conditions. So what, what decides then our destiny? It takes decisions to rise and fall in life. You might have bad circumstances. All right, cool. So what are, what are you going to do about it? Are we going to just wallow and in our self-pity you know, and keep on throwing our anger at God and say, God, why did you let this happen to me? So what are we going to do about it? So that is the decisions. You know? and the power of decision number one is that it has a power to decide where we end up. Number two, decisions have consequences. So the moment we make one decision, we are, there's already a motion set in place in the spiritual realm. We make a decision, things have already been set in motion, and we are headed into a certain direction, whether it is for the better or for the worse. I think for us, you know, some people who who are struggling with, you know, hidden sin. I think we can relate to that, okay? We can relate to that. Now, how did it all start? It all start from that very little, small decision that we made, that, that little gear that start the whole thing in motion, you know, that first gear. You know, uh, that is how I myself also fell into sin. And it became a problem for me for many years until I got delivered. Praise be to the Lord. So they all start from small, sinful pleasures, and then we start making excuses. Ah, oh, no, it's fine. I'm, it's just because I'm weak, you know. Yeah, I can, I can afford to continue. You know, God is faithful, you know. He will not forsake me. I can continue to sin. Okay, that was the lie that I told myself. So when you start making excuses and go on the spiral, then we lose the ability to make quality choices. And similarly, when we make a decision to obey God, and pursue righteousness, we will enjoy blessings and then we become more than conquerors in Christ. So, based on what Scripture has told us, based on the principles in the spiritual realm, choose life. Okay? Choose life. Okay? Don't, don't think that small decisions don't matter. Consequences have the way to find us better than DHL, better than JNT. They can find us. Now, number three, the powers of decision. Decisions are made according to which spirit you give permission to. So, um, I don't know whether this is controversial or not, but many spirits can exist in one person. If you take the madman in the, in the cemetery that whom Jesus delivered, who has uh, how many demons? A legion of demons, right? Okay. So, he had so many spirits living in him. So you are not controlled by only one spirit, but sometimes we can have more than one spirit in us. And you look at the life of Judas. Judas, before, before he uh, betrayed Jesus, the scripture says the devil entered him. People can have different spirits in them, and the devil can enter if you have given them permission to enter. Have you watched puppet shows before? Have you watched? Or have you watched uh, the Got Talent shows? You know the people who hold the puppet? The ventriloquist? The one that, as if he's speaking 
but the guy is the the voice is as if it's coming from the puppet. And sometimes the puppet can even do dancing, they can even do actions, you know. But if you take away the puppet, or you take a, you take away the puppet, what you see is the hand that is handling the puppet. And you also see you also see without the hand, the puppet is lifeless. So what kind of spirit or is controlling that person? Re- Revelation 3.20. Can you give this to us? Revelation 3.20. Revelation 3.20. This is, a, I think, those who follow the Bible memory verses, you will remember this verse. Behold, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Okay. Now, brothers and sisters, Jesus, God, also needs your permission. He needs you to allow Him to enter. If God, who created everything, needs permission to enter, what other soul than spirits? Okay. So, if God respects your choice, every other spirit also must respect your choice. Even Satan also needs, he needs to knock, but he's too, he is too proud to do so. So what he will do is, he will manipulate how we make wrong decisions is because the manipulation of the evil one. Okay? Buying our eyes, telling us lies, you know, packaging those consequences that we talk about. You know, it's bad, you know, it's bad. But then the devil will tell you in the software and say, actually, it's okay. It's okay. A little bit only. Okay? And before that, you gravitate towards, before that, you gravitate towards a life of pain and suffering. And you don't even know how it started until you want to trace back step by step how it all began how we make that one decision. So, the, the devil can impact us, our ability of the mind yeah, to actually make sound and quality decisions. On the contrary, if we submit to the Lord, we have life. In John 6, 63, Jesus said, it is the Spirit who gives life. So when we make the conscious decision to accept you know, Jesus as our Lord and Savior, praise God, I think most of us here are, we have already accepted Him. The Holy Spirit enters us and dwells in us. What the Holy Spirit does is, He is not going to force you to make good decisions. But what the Holy Spirit will do is, He will guide us and the blessings that come from God will slowly and but surely change our orientation into a superior one. Then we will be able to see beyond the pleasures of the flesh, beyond these little, little guilty pleasures, sinful pleasures, the little things that give us happiness. We can see beyond that and we can see the end goal. We can see the the truth, what is actually behind all these things. The Holy Spirit will give us the appetite to come to God. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot please God. Indeed, there's no, there's no way we can do it without the Holy Spirit. Now, he won't, yes, again, He won't force, but He will slowly start to make your life decisions better as long as you abide in Him, as long as you listen to the Spirit instead of things of this world. Now, I think we all must be very cautious with this matter because spiritual things are not to be played with. We shouldn't blame spirits or the Holy Spirit in this matter, you know, for all the pain that we are suffer, we suffer from. You know, we cannot say that, ah, it is the devil who made me sin. Mm-hmm. But you gave him the permission. You allow him to enter your life. So what is your choice then? Right? You will know what kind of spirit is influencing a person by looking at the decisions that they make. Whether it is for life or for destruction. So we can judge the, the spirit by the fruit that they produce in their life. Whether it is a good fruit or no fruit at all. Okay. So those are the three um, powers uh, behind decisions that we make. Now, there, are, there will be some people who say, okay, God made me choose between this and this. But what if I don't make a decision? I just 
sit on it. If you don't choose to obey, we sit on it. Then number one is, circumstances will choose for you. You don't make a decision on your own, then you allow the world to choose for you. Okay? A farmer doesn't need to choose for the wheat to grow. Agree? Anyone is a farmer here? You have farmed before? Anyone has do any farming, done any farming before? Garden, ah, okay, garden. Okay, have, no, the, the, okay, okay, planting. Let's just say planting stuff. Okay, good. Do you like wheat? Do you like wheat growing in your garden? Oh, no, okay. Good. Now, do you, do you need to choose for the wheat to grow? No need. You just need to stop planting. You need to stop working on it. You just need to decide to stop working on it, and then the wheat will grow. If you don't want to choose, life and circumstances will choose for you. Now, what kind of world are we living in? Are we living in the kind of world that God promised in, the, in uh, Revelations, you know, the New Jerusalem? Definitely not. We are living in a fallen world. And this fallen world is going to get wicked by the day, unfortunately. Uh, because end time is coming. Sorry, this is already the end times. Jesus is coming back soon. So, this world is going to choose for us. Do you, want them to, do you want the world to choose for you? No, definitely not. It's not going to lead you into goodness. In fact, it will always, it will always um, cause us harm, yeah? Okay? If we don't choose God's side and we start making these life decisions that are you know, good for ourselves and good for us according to God's word, then we will find ourselves being tempted more and more by the devil. The temptations will become more and more real and sooner or later we will suddenly we stop regarding them as spiritual attacks. Yeah. Okay, then we will continue to indulge in sins and unfortunately some people will eventually reject God. They will reject God and embrace the world which is very sad. One man cannot serve two masters, agree? Yes, Scripture says so. Cannot, cannot serve two masters. Our God is a jealous God. Okay? We can either follow Him or reject Him. For Jesus said in Matthew 12, 30, He who is not with me is against me. So, don't let circumstances choose for you. Make wise decisions according to the Spirit. And number the second consequence is, second problem with allowing circumstances to choose for, sorry, not making conscious decision to obey God is, num number two, we will not have the staying power in our spiritual journey. Some of us may, some of us may wonder, like, why are we always stuck in that loop? If anyone, is, if everyone, anyone here has struggled with sin before, I think you will understand. It's always, always sin, repent, and then you relapse. Sin, uh, repent, and then relapse. It's a cycle. Why, why are we why are we always stuck in it? Why are we stuck in it? Okay? Because temptations, temptations will come. And we in scriptures in Corinthians it says that um, no temptation has overtaken you. Other than what is common to mankind. God is faithful. When we are tempted, God will provide a way out. Agreed? So that we will not. So we will not be able to endure it. Now the issue is, how do we see the way out? No. And if we see the way out, why aren't we taking it? So the issue with, people, with our problem with sin is, we can see, sometimes we cannot see the way out. That's why we fall into sin. And sometimes we can see the way out, you know, God, Holy Spirit is telling you, ah, ah stop doing it. No, you know what will happen? And then you just, ah, yeah. And then you fell back into the same problem again. So that is the, the loop, yeah? Okay? Now, it's all because we have not made that one conscious decision to live that way of, that way of life. Make a decision and choose life. Don't worry whether you can achieve it or not. Don't worry about the process. You just need to make that one decision and God will honour it. Whether you, whether you want Him or don't want Him, God will honour it. He will, res he will respect that choice. He will not force you to come to Him. He will let you be. 
until until circumstances start to eat you, uh, until circumstances start to eat that person up. If we chose him, and he will honor, and he will give grace for us to overcome it. Two verses I would like to share with you that has given me a lot of comfort in a lot of comfort in my journey as a believer. Number one is Philippians one six. It says, "He who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ." So if God, if I chose God and God began a good work in me, I am sure I have faith that the Lord will continue bringing me forward on this journey. He will give me the staying power to be able to resist sin and to stop habitual sinning. And the next one is Matthew 6.33. Seek first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added to you. Seek His kingdom first. Don't worry about the decisions. Sorry, don't worry about what will happen if we chose Him. Just chose Him. Choose Him and then let God lead. That is the, one of the principles that I have held on to. Now, um, so I have talked about what are the powers behind decisions and then what happens if we don't make a deliberate decision to obey God. Now for the final, for the final uh, part that I want to share with you here is what do we do then? What is choose life? What do we mean by choose life? There are three things that I think quite relevant. It's quite relevant. Number one is every believer, every person must make the decision to love the Lord and serve Him. Choose life is to choose Jesus. What can be better to define choosing life than to come to the one who created life, to the author of life? John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So, trust and commit in Jesus. Hope that, pray that Lord, He, he will give you life. And Matthew twenty two thirty seven says, And Jesus said to him, Matthew twenty two thirty seven, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. The biggest purpose of choosing life is to have a functional relationship with Jesus. John 10.10 10, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Follow Jesus and He can give us a fulfilling life. Every, the definition of fulfilling life can be slightly different for different people, but in all it will lead us to goodness. Jesus has come so that we may have life in Him. We cannot continue to live a life that is contrary to God's commands. I think sometimes people take grace a bit too extreme and then they say that no matter what I do, you know, God will forgive me. So if we are constantly living a lifestyle that is rejecting God, we really need to ask ourselves, examine and think, you know, is He actually our Lord and Savior? Okay. So, follow Him and have life. Reject Him and suffer consequences. I think it's very straightforward for all of us. But sometimes, we might hinge off to the side a bit. And sometimes, we don't, we don't come back to the, to the path for a very long time. We can stray. We can stray. But praise be to God, He is always faithful. Number two, what is the purpose of choosing life? It is to live a life of purpose and meaning. You live a life of purpose and meaning. Now, um, God gave us life on earth, yes. But did He give us life just so that we can live, eat, sleep, drink, work, and then die? I mean, unfortunately, sorry. Yeah, we all will pass on. But is that the purpose of life? To exist, brothers and sisters, to merely exist as a life form on earth is a waste. Life is much more valuable than that. But how does life become valuable? It is when it is connected to 
purpose. You have intelligence. Smart person, really smart, but it's not being, it's not being used properly. Is that purpose of life? No, there's no purpose in that. Uh, there are a lot of smart people who misuse their intelligence. We have people who do arm robbery. You, you think they are dumb? No, they have, they have schemers, they have planners. They know how to, they know how to uh, plan their route. People who, people who commit crime, they steal cars. Do you think they just go there and knock your car? No, no, they, have, they prepare all the things that they need and then they plan an escape route. So yeah, there are smart people. But smartness, intelligence used on the wrong path, used carelessly is just rubbish. It's just wasteful. And the last thing is wealth. You have money. You have money, but money with no purpose is useless. Money with no purpose is useless. So what is the purpose then? What is the ultimate purpose of life? John 4.34 My food is to do the will of Him who sent me and to finish His work. Each of us have a certain mission that we need to complete. God has given us assignments to bring goodness to His people, to bless people, to teach people, and so on, to serve Him. And He has given us gifts and blessings and talents to achieve that. But whatever God has given us is useless by itself yeah, until we connect it to purpose. Do you remember the parables of the talents? Parable of talents, the ten talents. The master is going away and he gave his servants talents. He gave, um, I think, he divided, it. he divided it among the three servants and he went away. And when he came back, the first two servants did well. The master said, good job, good and faithful servant. Okay, here, I'm going to give you more to do. I'm going to give you more to govern. But the last servant, what did he do? He hit the talent, right? He hit the talent, not, make, not even using it at all. And then, uh, was the master happy? Was the master happy with this uh, kind of servant? No, you know, he's not happy. People can have more degrees than a thermometer. Okay? But until they figure out the true purpose of life, that those degrees are nothing. And one can have a lot of wealth, but if you can't find the purpose to use that wealth, we are just like the rich fool. The rich fool who, because of his love for money, rejected God, uh, rejected a chance to serve Him, to serve the Creator. And we are all called to live according to His purpose. All things work for the good of those uh, who love Him, who are called according to His purpose. For we are His workmanship. Ephesians 2.10 Created in Christ Jesus for good works in which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Okay, so live a life with purpose. Don't live a life of careless, making careless decisions. Now the last thing about choosing life is in my notes here, number three, is the decision, ladies, brothers and sisters, to grow in wisdom. The decision to grow in wisdom. Now, after we have made the decision to follow Jesus, we are reborn. We are born into a new kingdom. And Jesus says that our, they are all children of, we are all children of God. So we are all born into the kingdom. We are babies. We were babies and then we need food. We need spiritual food. The, the value of wisdom then, what is wisdom? is in its ability to help you to make destiny superior decisions. Decisions that can change your destiny, that can change your life for the better, that is wisdom. A lot of people claim to be wise. There are a lot of wise people in this world. But we look at their life, there's no excellence in it. They say that they are wise, they are smart, they have knowledge. But we don't see excellence because they are still making poor decisions in life. If a man is carrying a spirit of wisdom in him, he will, have, he will be able to make superior decisions. Whether you, are, whether you are able to make an impact in this world for the good of his kingdom, it depends on your growth. We don't have to, we don't have to chase success. 
when we choose to grow, success will follow. Now, Luke 2, 51 to 52, I'll just take a part of it. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature, in favour with God and man. We look at Jesus' example. Jesus didn't grow to become Jesus of the one who calmed the seas, the one who raised the dead, the one who healed the blind. He didn't become that Jesus in the next time. How many years did he take? Do you know how many years he took to go into ministry? 30 years, thank you. So 30 years, he went through the process of growth. There are things that we can only do once we have attained a certain level of spiritual growth. If you want to, if you want to preach a message that is sound, we must have that growth. If we look, we look at pastor preaching week by week after week. Pastor has invested time to study the scripture, to meditate on those things. We look at the um, ministers who called for crusades. If they have not attained that kind of spiritual growth, who do you think will listen to them? Who will listen to it? It's a waste of money. No one will be able. No one will invite a person who is not able who has not attained that stature of growth uh, in the spiritual realm, to pray, to pray for healing. No, we, we, with sincere hearts, yes, we pray for healing, yes, we, we love our brothers and sisters, but there is a kind of healing, the type that we, uh, like with Pastor Robert, that kind of healing, that kind of anointing, is not everyone can achieve. Yes, he has to give, but he has to, he has to put time and effort into studying, into working with God, to be able to deliver people from demons, to be able to do deliverance, to pray for spirits to live. That also will require us to achieve a kind of track record with God. For God to move the person that we the person that is channeling that spirit also needs to grow together with God's capacity to work. Yeah? So if we rush into doing things. No? I'm not talking about only spiritual issues, but also with work and so on. If we rush into things, what will happen? Without proper knowledge, without proper preparation, what will happen? It will only bring us pain, embarrassment, and suffering. If you remember in Acts 19, there were a group of people called the sons of Sceva, they were the sons of this uh, minister, of this uh, priest, yeah, called Skeva. And when they tried to do deliverance on a person, the evil spirit answered back and said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? And what happens to them? They got beaten up, you know. So they learned a very painful lesson, yeah. So likewise, all of us, brothers and sisters, if you want to have impact in the kingdom of God, if you want to have impact in your work, if you want to have impact in life, you want to have breakthrough, breakthroughs in life, not only in your work, but also in relationships and so on, we must all heed and respect the laws of growth. There is, there is growing that is needed. Perhaps everyone's growing is a bit different. But nonetheless, all of us need to seek growth. Put in sincere effort to seek the wisdom through the Word of God, by, led by the Holy Spirit, and looking onto men who have gone before us. Elisha, look at Elijah. If the, minister, if the ministry of men is not needed, then there's no need for you know, God to appoint different people. You know, mentors are passed from one another person to another. Joshua looked on to Moses. So if any one of us lack wisdom, let us learn. Let us settle down you know, and examine ourselves. What are the areas that we are lacking? If you are lacking, if you are lacking in knowledge, read up then. If you do not know what God is talking about in your life, what He's doing in your life, study the scriptures. If you want, if you want to become a musician, if you want to learn music, Learn from someone who knows music. 
You know? So we learn from people, we learn from the Word of God, we're also led by the Holy Spirit. Romans, Romans 12, 2, be transformed by the renewing of the mind. Okay, so, dear brothers and sisters, I think God doesn't want us to live a life of carelessness. There will, be, there will be a point of time that we have to eventually come to God and choose whether we want to follow Him, we want to accept Him, or we want to reject Him. We cannot keep on running away from uh, choices here. Yeah? Like I said, consequences will always have the ability to find us. We, we, can, we can try to avoid consequences, but eventually it will catch up with us. So all I have shared with you is, number one, is we all make choices in life for the better or for the worse. And then where we are in life, respectfully speaking, reflects our decisions, reflect the kind of decisions that we make. Decisions are not to be made lightly. Our destiny depends, literally depends on it. Number two, to be able to make choices, we need to deliberately examine. We must put in the time to examine what are the pathways, what are the choices that are available. The devil, the evil one, will try to conceal you know, he will always try to hide, hide away the choices. He will only let you see. You see, there's only one thing you can do, okay? Uh, say if your father has done this thing, or your parents have done this thing that are not good in their life, you have no choice. You are their children, you must follow them. So the devil will try to limit the choices and make you choose between the bad ones. He will not let you see the truth. So, yes, asking, looking onto Jesus, make the right choice. The Old Testament is filled with people, kings, kings, especially the northern kingdom of Israel, that uh, even some of the ones in Judah also, whom I quote, they did evil in the sight of the Lord and walked in the ways of his, of, uh, his father okay, and make Israel sin. So they chose to follow the, the pathways of their father because they had been blinded. Next, we need to examine choices. Shown us, God has shown us the consequences of His Word and what will happen if we reject Him and the counsel of the Holy Spirit. If we do that, it will only be to our disadvantage. If we reject God, there is no good that will come out from it. Uh, I have tried before. It doesn't, doesn't, didn't work well. I think I wasted like 10, 10 plus years of my life just because I rejected God in the beginning. So, choose to make a decision to love Him, obey Him, and serve Him so that we can enjoy His great and precious promises through our knowledge of Him will cause by His own glory and goodness. And then we may begin to make superior quality choices in life. I would like to end uh, with uh, one more scripture. Can we look at First Kings 18, verse 21? Elijah came to all the people this is on Mount Carmel, and said, how long will you falter between two opinions? If the Lord is God, you know, if the Lord is indeed God in your life, follow Him, obey His commandments, serve Him, love Him, pray to Him. But if it's Baal, which represents the world, represents the, the things that are wicked, if, you, if, you, if Baal is your God, follow Him. But the people answered him not a word. So the people of Israel refused to make a decision there and then. So brothers and sisters, don't be like them. Okay, I'm not, I'm not sure who I'm, whom I'm speaking to, but don't be like them. If the Lord is God in your life, commit to Him then. Seek knowledge. Choose to live a righteous life and serve Him. So choose life. Thank you. I'm now spending time every week to mentor four young leaders. I spent 45 minutes with each of them, talking to them about their life and going through the book of Romans chapter by chapter. We identify the theme of each chapter and the subtitles of 
the sections in the chapter. I feel in this way they can know the Bible better. I believe that the key to be a better leader is to know the Word of God. BM Bright Star has set up a theological fund. Our target is to raise 80,000 ringgit to send some of our young members to study for three years in a Bible school and for them to serve the Lord full time. So far, we have raised 20,000 ringgit. I'm conducting an evangelism training course for four men. We use the XEE system using video and workbook to teach. The four trainees are divided into two teams and each team is required to witness to 10 persons. They are now going out to witness and we praise the Lord that some people have prayed to receive Jesus Christ. We will train another batch in the second half of this year. Our church fasts on the last Thursday of the month. Fasting is our spiritual nuclear weapon. The purpose of the monthly fast is to pray for the salvation, deliverance, healing and restoration of the non-believers. Last year, 10 new persons joined our church. They are previously non-believers, backsliders or nominal Christians. Now let me lead us to say the closing prayer. Let's pray. Lord Almighty, please have mercy on us. As we live in this world, we face trials and tribulations. There are times we find the struggles too overwhelming. Lord, always hold our hands and tie us with your cords of faithfulness that cannot be broken. Lord, thank you for the new covenant that you have established with us and sealed with the blood of your Son, Jesus. We believe that you will be faithful and you will never leave us nor forsake us. Please finish the work that you have started in us so that we will have the full image of the man from heaven, Jesus, your Son. We pray for wisdom, skills and strength to be given to everyone to work, to do business and to study. May they have happy and godly marriages. May they bring help to many who are lonely and discouraged. May they be a blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.